folks singing. Uh, I was back to Diane's question. We are to be as he is, walk as he walked. And we can only be that when he rests and abides in us. And that image is shining outwardly in our character, in our actions. Yes. Can they crank me up? Well, I, I was kind of low volume there for a moment. You got anything? You okay? All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Are you ready for this? Uh, what is this? Okay, Sashi gives me a smile and a thumbs up and points at it. Okay, kingdom and righteousness first. <laughs> Do you have a list of priorities in your life? I imagine most of us do. But do you have righteousness, kingdom and righteousness first? First. I didn't say that. I did not. Let me just define first before I tell you where it comes from. And you, most of you probably already know where it comes from. First is foremost. In time, anytime. He's first. In place, any place. He's first. In order, he's first. In importance, he's first. Any questions about that? And that's just how we live our life. Jesus says, there's a whole discourse of what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. And so on he presents this. Jesus is presenting it. When he gets to this point, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You say, well, don't I have to work? Yes, likely. But what's first? Kingdom and righteousness first. You mean before groceries? Yeah. Before a house? Yeah. How do you know which one to buy? How do you know which one to build? How do you know these things if you're not, if we don't put kingdom and righteousness first? Somebody was sharing with me the other day, and they said it's to the point in life now that they don't even consider things other than spiritual things. Because the rest of this, they have found has all been added to them. Do they work? Yes. Do they play? Yes. Do they do things their wife wants? Yes. In case it was a woman, do they do the things a husband wants? Yes. But all these things are added on once, righteous, once you have priorities clearly established in your life. I told him Wednesday night, after last Sunday, Brother Dale does this to me. Sometimes, I'll be frank with you, I can kind of brush him aside because I don't have a clue where he's coming from. <laughs> that uh -huh, huh, was him, by the way. Other times I sit and ponder it, and sometimes I respond, and sometimes they just flat eat at me. And last week was one of those that ate at me because... <laughs> <laughs> and what he'd ask, we, we remember we was talking about the, the, father, the, the parable of the, of the lost son, the prodigal son, but we didn't look at it from the son's views particularly. We was looking at it from the father's view who always provided, always provided, always provided. He says to me after we got all done and I was kicked back and barely relaxed and so is that all the kingdom is? Well, now, what do you want to do that to me for? You know? So I pondered it for a couple, three days. I was heading up the road, and what is that? Is it, is it, what's that fix-em-up wrecks 
down here on the corner, south of town on. Collision connection. I made use of the turnout there and wrote this down. So what is the kingdom? The kingdom is all that the king is and all that the kingdom contains. That is the kingdom. So this morning, he comes in and says, where is the kingdom? Is there any difference between kingdom and righteousness? Mm, I got, I knew I was pretty safe. No, there's no difference between kingdom and righteousness. They both are the same, similar. You can't have one without the other. You, because the king and the kingdom, Dale told me this morning, are one and the same. Right? The king and the kingdom are one and the same. You cannot have righteousness without the king because it's his righteousness. Now there went the whole Sunday morning message tied up in a bow. Now do you want to, no, I'm not going to give you a choice. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> with that then, remember Jesus said, pray. The, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you suppose that's his desire? I expect it's not only his desire, it is his expectation, it is his plan, it is his purpose, and it will happen. All right. Jesus also said, we've already said, seek first. Jesus also said, give us this day our daily bread. And with that, I got off someplace else. So before we get back to righteousness and the kingdom, we're going to take a look at daily bread. Because he said, give us this day our daily bread, Matthew 6, 11. The parallel verse is in Luke 11, 11, 3. It says, give us day by day our daily bread. Has anybody ever gone short of daily bread? Well, don't ask about thrilling days of yesteryear, but we never come short, <laughs> but just enough. <laughs> Okay, and just enough covered it in those days. All right, here you go. So, to, he gives you, as his own, he gives you an advantage. Do we understand that? With him we have an advantage. We have some place, someone that has promised us certain things in the kingdom. All right, our daily bread. The bread spices for each day, mixed flour, water, baked, or food of any kind. There is an example of daily bread in the scripture. Are you? Now, you Old Testament boys, there was, a, there was a case that God provided daily bread to the children of Israel every day, except the seventh day. Then he gave them enough on the sixth day. What, what's, what's he talking about? Manna. Daily bread. But see, it was planned, it was planned, it was planned that Israel would be a kingdom of priests, a peculiar people, none like them. We're a peculiar people, none like us in Christ. But let me read Exodus 16, 4. And then said the Lord unto Moses, <laughs> see, it wasn't going in the promised land. Exactly, they were not. Except a couple of spies recommended it. But here's the end result of that discourse where Aaron and Moses was about stoned to death, etc. And then, oh, they did say something else in there. I, I wrote it down. They said, uh, let's make a captain. These guys aren't leading us like we want to go. Let's make a captain. You ever made a captain? Have you ever put somebody, something in God's choice place? Well, in this case, they did. Or they, they didn't. They didn't go ahead and do it. They just threatened it. Now, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, daily bread, that I may prove them whether they walk in my law or no. So there's an example of daily bread. 
I believe this provision, not manna, but I believe the provision of daily substance has been ordained by God in existence since the first Adam. You say, well, wait a minute. I think so. When Adam was created, he was placed in a garden prepared for him. Correct? A garden established specifically to sustain his physical life and a meeting place with God. That, was that not the intent? Absolutely. So, therefore, the garden provided for Adam plants, animals, fowls, fish. He had a great variety. The garden's environment, when Adam entered it the sixth day, was mature and ready for him. You can eat of any tree you want, except one. And they were about to make another captain. They didn't know this, what they was about to do. But anyhow, the garden was mature and ready to be harvested by man. It was ready to supply his daily bread or his daily need on the sixth day when he entered the garden. In fact, it was a kingdom of heaven on earth, and Adam was assigned as the authority or the administrator of this kingdom. As the image of God, he was to have dominion of this kingdom. You see, I understand that. While bread is the current subject, let us examine a one-verse parable about bread. Everybody knows what that is? A one-verse parable about bread. Commentators do not agree on this verse. Matthew 13, 33. Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven. So I think if he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about some, something about the kingdom of heaven. Here it goes. Is like unto leaven. Well, the leaven is always evil in the Bible. So they say. But if leaven is mixed here, as an ingredient that represents like unto the kingdom of heaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal or dough until the whole was leavened. Now, have you, how's your patience? Do I understand this process right, ladies? I've never made a loaf of bread in my life. I've done some things but never make a loaf of bread. You mix up this dough and you put some yeast in it. Ruth is guilty of killing the yeast. She gets it too hot. But I won't. Don't go tell her that. Although she probably sees it on the screen in the nursery. So you mix up this yeast in this dough. You mix it all up. There's a little water in there and a little flour and that sort of thing. And then what do you do with it? You let it rise. You, you, you just let it set somewhere. You cover it up. Kind of, you kind of cover it up and just leave it set. What happens to it? It rises. If you haven't killed it, it rises. Nothing. No. Have you ever noticed that the events in the kingdom of God doesn't happen? Have you, let me ask you this question. Have you ever wanted that bread to rise faster? You ever done anything about it to make it happen? Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. That don't fit my illustration. <laughs> okay, God comes along and says it's time. You've got this stuff warmed and it's, it's now proper size. Okay. And many a times you wanted it to hurry along. Have you ever wanted God to hurry along in the things of the kingdom of God? Would you hurry up? You promised. I want it. Bring it on, and, uh, and our anxieties or our, imp our impatience, let's put it where it is, our impatience <laughs> surges to the front. I want this bread ready. But that yeast is in there quietly moving along, doing its thing, always moving, until the whole lump is Risen or yeasted, <laughs> if you will, or leavened. Got that? God is moving. There is promises, and the yeast or the leaven is causing the lump to rise. 
If the lump is holy, so is everything else. Whew. What the lump provides is holy. The lump, yeast and all, is one. It is the kingdom. It is the kingdom with a king, with righteousness, and whatever the king, whoever the king is, and all the benefits that come with the king. The kingdom. Wow. For one verse, that took a while, didn't it? Whew. God's ways are kind of subtle. You never plant a garden and harvest it the next day. And we've tried. He transforms the fertile ground gradually by planting the seed, which grows gradually, many times invisibly, until the day of harvest or the day of the promised manifestation. Wow. You know, God's desire is that it be on earth as it is in heaven. Now, you say, well, that's unreasonable. No, that is only reasonable because that's what he said. That's what he said he wanted. He, that's what he said. Is that not what he said? He wants it. Now, <laughs> whoa. God's desire, then, in Numbers 14, 20 and 21, let's read this. And the Lord said, and this is in this context, oh, where he's being disobedient, I have pardoned Moses, according to your word, Moses, I pardoned these people. But I want you to know something, that as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Has it happened yet? Will it happen? Absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt. It will happen. Well, then, you see, then we have to go back to the, the Scripture verse that we used earlier before the, at the beginning of the service. We go back to 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we find out that that glory is actually living in us. Yet the glory will be manifested in all the earth. Multiple people, multiple actions, and it will happen. Without a veil of deceit, without a veil of cloudiness, we will see the extent of the transformation that he performed in us when we look at him, look at the mirror. Because we're bypassing and we're looking. I, I've told you before about uh, uh, the Kroger store manager when we were a uh, Kroger store manager, and the guy was born again, and, and he's a little guy, kind of square, black as eyes I ever saw. And I seen him afterwards, after he called me and told me what happened to him. I seen him, and you know those black, black eyes had changed. I was looking in a mirror of what he was now inside. Changed. Transformed. See? Don't you just love it when you see a transformation from glory to glory? He's changed us. You see, I, I, I don't know as I saw it. Well, the plan and promises of God are sure. Like yeast, it quietly fills the whole lump, the whole earth. Miles Monroe makes this statement. The Bible is about the rise, fall, and rise of God's kingdom on earth. It tells a story of a kingdom established, a kingdom lost, and a kingdom regained. We are in the process dramatically the king has said, go into all the world. I'm with you always. That's what the king said. I give you power. All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye. I've told you about the time I kept walking around and saying, if he had all power, what did he do with it? He didn't take it to heaven and file it under P. He delegated it 
He delegated it. It's all part of the kingdom. So let's get back to the priorities of this morning. The kingdom and righteousness first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. I'm not thinking about the other things so much this morning. I'm thinking about seek. Be earnestly desire and put yourself in a position to search diligently for what the kingdom holds for each one of us. It's not a sign that we're looking for. We're looking for the kingdom. That thing which is foremost in time, place, order, or importance. We've already stated, take no thought, saying what we eat, what we drink, or with all shall we be clothed. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these. He sticks in there a parenthetical phrase, and let me read that with that included. What shall we eat, or with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles, the foreigners, the pagans seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of all these. But seek first the kingdom and righteousness. Let me do this with you this morning. Let me define kingdom and righteousness further. Now, I cannot get these subjects accomplished. I can give you highlights of them this morning, and I want to do that. Because if, I'm, if we're to seek something, we ought to know what we're looking for. Or where it is. I, I mentioned to Dale this morning that Jesus had gave us explicit directions to the kingdom of God. And he did not point to the sky. John 17, 21. Read it right here. Or listen to me share it with you. <laughs> well... That's, oh, excuse me, it's Luke 17, 21. Yeah, I had it listed as Luke, right, and spoke it wrong. All right, just put it down to, okay, sorry to confuse you, Bill. <laughs> Zach made it without a stumble last week. <laughs> that, that is bad. <laughs> First time this year. But it, okay, here we go. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Simply put. No question. That's where the kingdom is at. The kingdom is here, it's in us. And the kingdom is here, and it is in us. So there's no question about that. Inside you. Luke 12, 32. How does it come about? Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He gives you the kingdom. Gives you the kingdom. Finish, bestows to you the kingdom. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Voila. That's why you don't, you're not back there searching for it. It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, how about that? How does in 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but it is in power. Dunamis, it's force, is miracle working power. That is what is in the kingdom of God. Where is the kingdom of God? In you. And it's in you in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you have the ability to share righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. All those things is inside you, and they're in there in sufficient abundance for you to share. No question. You stressed, there's a place to get rid of it. Things that are, seem to be out of your control, there's a place that you can rest. There's a power here. There's, it's inside you, and it's made up of peace. Seek first the kingdom. 
There is something I want us to notice, both in, in, in the kingdom and in righteousness this morning. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about a parable. Uh, for the record, it's in Matthew 13, but I'm not going to go there. Are we? Are we? We're not. What is that? <laughs> We're going there? Proceed. Oh, I'm there already. Okay. Proceed. Okay, what this is, he's, he sowed some seed in the kingdom of the world. He defines it as children of God. All right? And in there then, the servant says, look, there's something else in here. It's called tares. Darnell, it's counterfeit wheat. How did it get there? He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Next verse. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of what? Your good seed. Plant you, man. <laughs> Plant you. Plant me. We're good seed. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Next verse. The enemy that sowed them is who? Does that tell you anything? Satan comes out to destroy or take away, confuse that which is told or the good seed in the kingdom. He is personally, he personally comes against the kingdom to dilute it. Do I get in a panic? No. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But there he is. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Let them grow. Let them grow to the end. The outcome is clear. The outcome is fixed. Wow. Wow. Let's take some quick looks at righteousness. We have said multiple times it is equity of character and acts, not the equity of our character and acts, but the equity or the equalization of his character. When I ever make a mistake, you may. But you have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, interceding for you. Right? That you do. So what does God see? what Sharon was describing. Amen. It's justification, innocent, holy. We discussed Wednesday night about holy being one. There's no part, no way you're going to be holy apart from the Godhead. None. The whole issue here is your oneness with the Godhead. The whole issue here is, okay, Holy, just. It is the condition that is, Thayer says, approved and acceptable to God. So what is? Righteousness is the condition acceptable and approved of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21. These are familiar, very familiar scriptures. And he hath made, prepared, appointed him, Jesus, to be sin for us, or who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So you are in him. In him you are made the righteousness of what? Of God. We just need to simply accept what he says. Not what I feel. Not the mistakes I've made. But what he said, the kingdom of God is where? In you. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God in him. Wow, that's come into existence to make or finish. Let's back up a little. Let's back up to verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you're there, right? He is a new 
creature. He is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become, what? New. Now look where those all things come from. And all things are, oh, are of God. I'm not making this up. I'm just reading what's on the written page of his word. And all things are of God. Who hath reconciled or exchanged us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation or the ministry of exchange? You can exchange. You have been exchanged in Christ. Wow. Hmm. May I just say, don't, again, don't be concerned with where the enemy tells you you are of no value. You do not measure. I said, bless God, I measure. Because he tells me I measure. This is a measurement that I don't have to personally achieve. I've received it in the person of Christ, and I received his kingdom, of which he is the king, and his righteousness, which is of God. Don't listen. Remember the carousel and the bags that keep going around and around and around. And the lady that stands there says, not my bag. Not my bag. Not my bag. I want this bag. It's mine. Not my bag. When he whispers that in your, not my bag. Not my bag. Wow. Where are we at? <laughs> and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation or the exchange, the restoration to the divine favor. Now, you say, well, does that say that in any place else? Thank you for asking the question. Ephesians 4.24. Right? And that you put on the new man which after God is created, what? In righteousness and true holiness. He says it again. Paul says it boldly. Put on the new man. Clothe yourself with him. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amazing. Just amazing. Note. I'm going to do this with you. It's not in, some people has a hard copy set of notes. Anybody else that wants, just jot down Proverbs 16, 12 and, and Proverbs 25, 5. And I'm going to just make a fixed uh, a statement. I remember researching this years and years ago. I didn't think I'd have, I didn't know where I could find it in old notes. So my memory banks kicked in. Here it says, the kingdom of God, in those verses I just read, the kingdom of God is established by, the throne of God is established in righteousness. The throne of God is established by righteousness. That, I believe that's what those verses say. Is that what they say? So, get this, then. To me, then, where God sets, he sets on righteousness. Well, he is righteousness. He sets on righteousness. He's surrounded by righteousness. Now then, you have boldness to come before the throne of grace. Why? Because you are of the same thing that he is. Righteousness. You don't have to crawl in there. Don't worry about it. You're not going to be smote with lightning. You are the same thing he is. Because he gave it to you. Wow. Now, Somebody made a comment about the title of this next section, and you was looking in your bulletins. <sighs> How scary is righteousness to Satan? How scary is it? Huh? It's mega. Absolutely. It is out there. There is a story. Paul, it's part of Paul's ministry and part of his life. It's recorded in Acts 13. Uh, 
I'll just give you the front part. I think we give, uh, a, I think you'll see three verses of it on the screen. But I'm just going to read it to you, beginning at verse 6 of the 13th chapter of Acts. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Barhezus, which was, which was with the deputy of the country, uh, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elomaz, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. And Paul just meekly turned his tail round or turned his person around and walked away. No. No. Paul, who was called, and Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, this, this had God's sanction to it. I want to tell you, this had God's sanction to it. Because Paul was speaking in behalf of him. He set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety, that's deceit, and all mischief, that's malignity. Thou child of who? Of the devil. Oh, he just walked up and mellowed out with him. Doesn't say that, does it? Thou child of the devil. You say there can't be people like that. Hello? Right there. Now, enemy of what? All righteousness. Now, enemy of all righteousness. This enemy was anti-righteous. And it was, I, I, you say, you may be stretching the fact here, but I believe this enemy is assigned against all righteousness. If Satan comes himself, and sows tares in the middle of the wheat, or children of darkness in the middle of children of the kingdom. Well, well sure, he's, righteousness is something else. He, it's first you seek the kingdom and righteousness. If he can keep you off those, he's got you sidetracked at the very beginning. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Wow. Verse 11. He continues. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. <laughs> what do I say in regards to that? I say exactly what he said. Behold, or hey, look, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You're not going to be looking long because thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist of darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. That is not how God acts. We just get out of school, or we just get out of this, and we get out of that as Christians. We let somebody else have it when they come against the kingdom of God. No, sir. Do you act like that? I'm not saying you ever will. I'm saying in this case it happened. Whoa. Mm. <laughs> Verse 12 is kind of it's kind of cool. And the deputy, when he saw what was done, what did he do? He believed. <laughs> Another believer. Another believer. But he was astonished, amazed at the doctrine or the teaching or the actions of the Lord. He put it in the right spot. That was not Paul. Paul was just a spokesperson. The Lord did it. Amen. And then they departed. This morning, kingdom and righteousness is first, foremost, in time, place, order, or importance. Let me do this with you. And we will conclude this morning. Kingdom and righteousness in us, a blueprint, the mirror of the image and likeness of God, unveiled 
unmask in human life. Again, kingdom and righteousness in us is a blueprint, the mirror of the image and likeness of God, unveiled, unmasked in human life. It's awesome. 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 Father, these words gives us, as we have heard from this morning, the priorities of our life is to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these other things will be added to us. That's your guarantee. That's your promise in the kingdom. We don't make these things happen. You make them happen. But we can set the goal. I will honor you first in time, in place. I will set you first Wherever we are, when you speak to us, we set you first. Or when we're just waiting on you, we set you first. We start with you and we finish with you. And in between, there is people that will have our time. There is people where we'll be working, where we'll be producing, where we'll be doing multiple th things and multiple tasks. But you are always first. You are priority Number one, in this kingdom relationship that you're setting out before us, you're not asking anything too much of us. You are asking the most important thing to us. Kingdom first, righteousness first, everything else to follow. Let us orchestrate our footsteps. Let our Thoughts be orchestrated also that we choose you and your priority. We thank you. We praise you. We'll have a great week in you. This week, we'll lift and tell others of the glorious news that the kingdom and righteousness of God is ours. It can be yours too. And may already be. We don't, we don't assume to judge. We just assume that the whosoever wills may come and partake of the water of the fountain of life freely. Thank you. You've chosen us in you. That's just a fact. You've chosen how it is to be. That's a fact. We honor you by choosing first. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we go, you sat here this morning and you 